Generic greetings and welcome to Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. Today's beverage is winter coffee. Essentially, it's a latte with cinnamon, nutmeg and almond in it. And it's quite nice. However, I thought I would use the last of the sachets up before it gets too far beyond Christmas because otherwise it just seems really inappropriate to drink it. Anyway, this is the sequel to obviously Battlefleet Gothic Armada, which in itself is based off the tabletop game Battlefleet Gothic, where you have big honking spaceships versus other big honking spaceships. Bar Games Workshop set in the 40k universe. So you've got battle barges, you've got sailcraft and everything in between. Now, I was looking forward to this quite a bit because it's it's, as far as I can tell, basically like the first one, but with just more stuff. So more campaign, more fleets, more, 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 hopefully more better. I've played about 11 hours of this so far, but I still class it at first impressions because I've only played uh, the prologue campaign, which is basically the tutorial on how to play the game, and a bit of the Imperial campaign, but there's two more. There's, well, there's three in total. You've got Imperials, Necrons, and Tyranids. I haven't played the latter two. Most of my... Uh, most of my game time has been spent in the battle mode, basically comp stomp with a friend, so myself and a friend fighting uh, skirmishes and just enjoying all of the different fleets and trying to uh, get um, get used to the different ways of the how, how they're playing and stuff. But because I haven't played all the fleets and unlocked stuff and things like that, I haven't got the nuances and really can't speak on that. But anyway, let's just jump in and I'll show you a little bit of the battle mode. It's going to be a quick preview of this one because... Um, I just want to show you the moment to moment of fighting and obviously if you don't like that then basically you're not going to like the game. So we have to select our faction as you can see there's quite a number of factions at the top here. So I mean you've got your Imperial Navy which was you know in the base game. I think in the base game you had what Imperial Navy, Orcs, Eldar um, uh, and Chaos whereas now you've got Chaos, you've got Corsair which is the, what what you did have in the, uh, the base game. Uh, you've got the Asurani which are Basically, uh, the Eldar, the, the rename them for, I think it was reasons of they couldn't copyright the names or something. I believe that's what I've been told, but I don't know if that's true or not. You've got Necrons, you've got Tyranids, you've got two versions of Tau. I think the first one is the Protectorate Fleet and the Merchant Fleet. I believe the Merchant Fleet is what Games Workshop produced, and the Protectorate Fleet was what the uh, what, what Forge World produced, I think. Or it might be the other way around, but anyway. Uh, so you can select different uh, factions there. You've got Adaptus uh, Mechanicus, you've got Adaptus Astartes, Space Marines again. Rename them there. Um, we're going to go with... Uh, we're probably going to go with Space Marines, actually, just because we can. We're going to go with Raven Guards, my uh, preferred preferred pick. You can see on the left there, I am unranked. You've only got ranked multiplayer uh, as of the time of recording. I believe they are going to expand upon this. There's already plans for a cop. Uh, Corp mode, uh, I don't know whether that'll be a full campaign or not, um, and some other play settings which will be good because that's something I think is a little bit lacking, but we'll get into that in a moment. So you can see you also level up as well, so I'm currently level 2. The more you fight, the more points you get. If you lose a fight, you get 50 points, if you win one, you get 100 points, and then as you rank up, you get more skills and more upgrades. I don't like that at all, I thought surely you should just have them all unlocked especially when it comes to multiplayer because if there's a balance issue and one of these higher skills is just more powerful which it might not be it might just be a case of they are different i mean my highest one is corsairs i'm level uh, six in that one but uh, i've got some cool stuff there but yeah i just prefer to have all stuff unlocked i mean yeah fair enough unlock stuff if it's like cosmetics but mm, skills not so much but anyway maybe it's a little carrot for people to play them and level up but anyway let's just go to rim guard and we will uh, go for skirmish 1v1 and you can change all the settings for things like uh, how many points you need to win and what environmental effects you have we're just going to go for full default on that one and we need to select our fleet so you can see it's based off 1v1 and 2v2. I'm going to uh, go for a custom fleet and then it will f hang for ages. There are some performance issues. This is the main one where you press the button and you wait for about 3 or 4 seconds. Um, maybe even longer for it to move in sims if you want to view the ships. Um, it just for some reason dies for a little while. Um, there has been a couple of things when we get into it as well, but look at that, it takes ages to get there. But at least you can view the ship, which is quite nice indeed anyway. So we need to, oh, I'm going to have to click custom fleet again, aren't I? So there we go. So we have to make our fleet up of uh, a total of 1,200 points. You cannot alter this. Again, mm, don't know why that restriction's there. I know they are also planning on putting in like bigger mods as well, so... Looking forward to that. So you can select any of these ships and you can see a boatload of stats on the left hand side. So shields, hull, front armor, etc. Um, we've also got the weapons that they have. So we've got, well, this is, in this case, it's a launch bay. Uh, heavy lance battery, which has got quite good range. You've got a lance turret. That's front and that's front. And what's that? Plasma macro batteries, which is 90 degrees side. Okay, fine. So we're going to have a big honking battle badge as a flagship. And then you select your line and your escort ships. You can only have... Um, 
a certain number of those, so you can't just go and just spam all of those. <laughs> uh, in the previous game, you used to customize the ships uh, individually and change them and do that sort of thing. Now, not so much. You basically just make your fleet. So uh, we've got that one there, which is decent enough. We don't want to heavily stack it to have um, to have just a. I mean, you could just go for big honking spaceships and call it a day, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go for, I think, straight cruiser because I'm looking for... Uh, what's that? Bombardment cannon turret, which is on the front. Uh, we've also got launch bays. We've got... That's torpedoes. I always like the torpedoes in Battlefield Gothic because you fire them and, you know, they, they actually you know, slowly drift off and... If they hit, they're going to cause a lot of damage, but it's about manoeuvring around them and such. Uh, launch base, launch base. I'm going to go with that one there, which is Bombardment Cannon Turret, and also the macro batteries, as well as the launch base. So we're going to go for a pretty much heavily launch, um, I'm guessing. And we'll have two of those, and then we've got a couple more points. Uh, 100, oh, we've got 181 points remaining. Um, oh, come on, it's only three points over. Come on, <laughs> everything's okay. Between friends, we can manage that. Uh, can we manage three of those we cannot so we'll have to go with uh, we can't even get that oh, we can get those and get them escorts in and we're four points under so uh, g fleet doesn't really matter we can name it um you can also you can see all the skills here as well but we'll get into the skills when we get into the game so that's that there so i've selected my fleet we now have to select uh, two skills and two upgrades so i'm going to go with almost certainly the um Arga probe and the super supercharged void shield is good, makes you invulnerable for 10 seconds. Plasma bomb is good because it resets, it sets fires on things as well. And also the bomb as well. I think I'm going to go with disruption bomb. We'll go more offensive than defensive. The auger rate of scout stuff out and then the uh, disruption bomb to blast the shields off them. We've got uh, some upgrades as well. So these change things uh, for, for the positive. So things like uh, the this weaponries here, the... Uh, Orient pattern weaponry and range of macro weapons increased by 4,500 uh, 4, units and uh, the same again for lances, uh, which we do have. I would like to click on that edit fleet, but I know it's going to just take a while to load in there, so let's not. We can go for upgrade. First company terminates when performing lightning strike. The critical assault chance is increased by 45%. Yes, we're going to do heavily boarding. And we've also got disruption overcharge. Increased damage to shields. Company ban assault strike cooldown reduced by 10% and applies to the flagship. So... That's not great. I think extra range would be good. Or do we want to get in there? I think we might want to get in there and board them. But again, it depends on what they've got. Um, navigation shield is good because damage caused by asteroid fields and minefields and spore fields is nullified. So you can just drive through an asteroid field all you want. Um, I think we'll go with probably increased range. I think that'll do. Right, um, in terms of the settings, we'll check that up. So you can see the difficulty. Uh, we can go with just medium difficulty is fine. And a random, so we don't know what we're going to verse. And then we will launch it. So it's going to randomly generate the map. It's just basically going to go flat plane and plonk down some uh, nebula, some... Um, I don't think it places mines, because um, we haven't got that turned on. Um, and it certainly doesn't have... Ooh, that's very pretty. Look at that. I mean, you, there's one thing you cannot... Just, I don't think uh, most people would disagree with us. That it's not a, not exactly an ugly game, is it? It's a very pretty looking game. Unreal Engine 4. So there we go. That is our fleet. And yeah, it looks menacing. Look at that. Let me zoom right in. The detail that's on these ships is pretty, pretty good. I mean, look at that. You've got like, like cathedral -y type stuff there. The bridge is back here. Hang on. Uh, there we go. Up there. Around that area there, I believe. If we try and zoom in some of the weapons, you should be able to see the detail. Um... Let's have a look at these small ones here. Them, some of those there. I'm looking for a turret. because um, Oh, there you go. There's a turret on there. It's sort of blending in because of the colour scheme. But anyway. So this has been randomly generated. And you can see we've got things like asteroid fields. or just, Well, not really an asteroid field, but just a clump of rocks, I guess. A huge field would be massive. Uh, nebula and nebulae. Nebula. To one of those. Uh, and we've also got some just random debris as well. So you go through those. It's going to hurt. You can press... Um, uh, where is it? Oh, I, don't, I can't see it at the moment because we're on deployment, but you can press a button and it shows you what those are. So, the way you win is, well, you can do it two ways. You can either smash the opponent up or you can capture points. There's a point there, there's a point there, and it's a person to get the uh, to get to a certain number of points. 
I'm going to probably put my barge roughly in the center. Uh, the AI does tend to favor a side with more points, so they're probably going to spawn around here and work our way down. Um, sorry, should run through the UI. Top right, minimap, speed controls, uh, to our time controls rather, and then all of the lists of the, sh the ships that you've got. And you can put them into different groups using control and the number key. So I'm going to uh, control all of those into uh, number three, and then those are number two. There we go. Uh, on the bottom left you have your stats for the ship as well as you can expand that to see what they've got in there and it shows you the arcs of fire and things like that. You've got all of the command settings which we'll go through in a moment, some speed settings and how they're going to turn and maneuver and then lots of <laughs> lots of options for uh, spawning things like um, torpedoes and um, all of your abilities which some have limited use. You can see that one there, that's got uh, three uses only on each of these as well as that uh, disruption bomb. So, I'm going to put my uh, ship there, the big one there. The small ones will go probably here and cap those. Uh, we'll put them like that. And I think I'll stick these roughly there and we're going to have to go in between these two. So we will ready up and then we'll set those going over to there. We'll say there. I'm going to put these on an order of running silence so until they, until they fire, they shouldn't be detected as easily. Um, if I hold onto Alt, you can see what the asteroid field does. So it's, it says like they're moving through it, you suffer some damage and such. And we need to avoid that um, if possible. So we can see that they've split their fleet up. We've got some signatures on here on the Auspex array. We've got two signatures there and we've got some over there. Now what I'm looking for is that they go. So those are craft of some kind. So it could be torpedo bombers, it could be fighters probably going to be some sort of boarding vessel. What I'm going to do then, because of that, is I'm going to get this ship, and I will say, probably Thunderhawk, uh, Stormhawk Interceptor Squadron, and I will deploy it on itself. So we fire out the front, and we get basically a a, a patrol going around the ship. So anything that comes near, not only is it going to get intercepted, because I do have interceptors on these things, but also it's going to get hit to bits. And I'm pretty, I think you I'm going to drive through that. Let's try and avoid that if possible. The enemy has and here we go. Area. So I'm going to pause a second and have a quick zoom in. That, oh, those are space marines. So we are versing space marines. Because <laughs> those are, oh, sorry, are those, are those the mini... Yeah, I think it's Space Marines, them ones. They're not Valkyries. I think they're the Stormhawks or something like that. But we'll find out in a moment because we're about to absolutely plaster them. There you go. There's a lot of shots going out. You can see we are engaging over there. I have captured that on the left-hand side. I'm now going to go probably over to here in the center. And then we're trying to drive through an asteroid field. Come on, don't do that. There we are. And you can see that we've got some flak going on there, some interception, and uh, we managed to take all of those out. So, not yeah, ideal that we're versing the same one. It would have been nice to have some variation in the matter, but uh, hey ho, we can't have everything. So, I'm going to peel off one of these craft and get it to the left, because I want to get up close and use my scanning ability. Um, are they still... Oh, no, they are actually... No, they, they have actually taken out all of my... Uh, Fighters, let me fire some more out then and we'll engage those. I don't like that the trails are so big. It just looks like a big fight ball. <laughs> we stand ready. I mean, you can understand quickly looking and go, ah, I know what's going on there. Oh, I don't know if you saw that. There was a little thing that came in there. That was a boarding torpedo. Those are boarding. Boarding. Okay, that's not great. Uh, I'm going to activate my scanner in but a moment. And... Scan. And I will do a Yui. Turn around. And we are versing... Yes. Astartes. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Um, they've probably already figured out where I am. Um, the advantage I have is that they have their fleet split up, so I'm going to turn my fleet around. I'm going to say, go for a lock on stands, increases range, and all of these can start shooting that little ship over there, because why not? Um, these are going to go around. You can hold control. Hang on. Uh... Sorry, shift, and then you can issue orders to go around like that. That is bad. That is a, a bomb of some kind. I'm going to... Yeah, there we go. I'm going to activate all ahead full. I'll uh, go through that now. On the left-hand side, you have options for your maneuvers. So all ahead full, it starts burning this, essentially, a, a, a fuel bar. And you can use it for all ahead full, so it increases your forward speed, but you don't turn as much. You've also got uh, high energy turns, so you can quickly, say, spin round. And you've got things like pivot on uh, normal maneuvering and then pivot on the spot. We are obviously trying to get out of the way. 
So that thing's been hit there quite a bit, and there's two other vessels here. What I want to do is basically board them. Uh, I'm going to also fire my Org probe behind because I want to figure out what's there. So I'll get these in. I will still focus on that one there. In fact, what I'll also do is pause it a second, and I'm going to change some of these settings. So you've got some things for auto-engagement mode. If I just click on that, it'll just crack on and do its own thing. In fact, I'm going to put those in auto-engagement mode and target that, and hopefully it'll avoid that, but we'll see. We'll also put a lock-on stance on those. Uh, for these ones, um, it depends on what weapons we've got. So for the big ship, our main weapons are really... Well, they're all over the place, actually. Up close, the mm, the plasma-heavy macro battery weapons are quite good. Uh, Lancers are all around, and then you've got the lance artillery on the front. Look at the range, 22,000. <laughs> um, so we could currently it's it's on to engage on the side at the longest possible range and prefer neither side. And you can also say things like lock on target. So if I put lock on target, I can say attack that but also issue it there issue the order there so it's going to continue firing on that or rather um, it's going to go there and make sure that it's still got an angle on it but I'm going to turn that off and just say go over there um, because I want to get close and I want to get boarding in what I'm going to do is do a disruption bomb about there and that should hopefully take their shields down for the pasting that they're about to receive so here we go you can see we are going forward there I'm going to say get within um, say four Point five, and they're trying to leg it out. They're not going to make it though. There we go. There's their shields down. So we will say, I think, Flunhawk squadrons. I do want to want to start boarding. Uh, I'm going to go all head full and just get in there. And I wouldn't like to be that ship behind because it's going to get very toasty. <laughs> uh, and yes, you can crash into ships, and it is also a valid tactic to do so. Uh, looks like that deck is damaged. When you click on the ship, you can see all of its stats as well. Pause it once more. And um, we can see what they've got, what's been damaged. And also, you can target certain things and set the priority. So, I want to say focus fire on the engines. Priority one. So, they'll focus on that more than anything else. I say I'm doing that there. Ah, actually, that's their flagship. So, that is probably the best target. So, priority one, target the engines. This one, don't really care about. So, let's crack on this one. I'll say engage that one. Those, I will engage that one because the little ship has been blown up and what I want to do is get in there as quick as possible because I want to board them and it looks like they're dropping a bomb as well that's going to take my shields off but I don't really care so much um, because they're driving into it as well so they're doing a lightning strike you can see that there and I, what I want to do is do pretty much the exact same thing back so I want to turn over to that way I want to get some uh, where is it Thunderhawk Annihilator which is the right one oh look there's some ramming going on there oh yeah there's a little bit of ramming going on mm, and some clunking noises um, I want to get where is the boarding one boarding so boarding there boarding there boarding there so there's all three squadrons going out i want to say side boarding action side boarding action you've got two assault options you've got either just a lightning strike so it's using the teleportarium and it beams them over but you can see the troop damage is six to nine however when you do that one the boarding action it isn't it's it's a shorter range actually is a short range it it's is not a short range. Uh, sorry, it is short range. Yes, it's short range and with limited angle, but you get a lot more in there. So with all of these, that should lose most of its crew in one go. Um, yeah, it's got three crew remaining, and now it's a drifting Hulk. <laughs> if there's one thing Space Marines do quite well, it is boarding. So that is now a drifting Hulk. If we have a quick look, we can see it is all kinds of broke. The engines have been slagged, as has the bridge. You can see it's all gone. Um, what has gone on it? And there's something else gone. Looks like the battery's on the side? I think so. Either way, that's their flagship. They're going to suffer a lot of morale, which is... Uh, you can't... S oh, actually, no. There's no morale because we know no fear. It's Space Marines. Other people will have it. Um, this fella here, I'm going to say on the chapter, which is another assault. There we go. In fact, do I have another chapter and other stuff? I do as well. Another chapter, another chapter. And, um, yeah, that's all kinds of good. I'm going to burn retros and see if I can get out of there, but I don't think I'm going to make it. Mm. Oh, I think I have, yeah. The reason I want to do that because they've just blown up their own ship. See that? They've scuttled it. Um, you can easily do that when you lose your stuff if you don't want to uh, 
sit around, you can use it as a weapon. You can also, though, beam stuff across to take it back, which is probably what I would have done in that case. But uh, apparently they decided that was not something they wanted to do. Let's go for a disruption bomb back there because their ships are coming in. I want to get these right out of the way quick in a hurry because... As you can see, they're getting boarded. I'm going to change this over to fight at long range now. Uh, oh, see, there you go. Look, I've lost one of my ships there. So if I wanted to, I could I could beam across. I'm just going to scuttle it, though, because I don't particularly care. However, what I do want to do is get some uh, Thunderhawk squadrons. I don't want to just bomb them. I'm going to say bomb, bomb, bomb. There we go. And let's see if we can bombard this one. So they are beaming across to me. You can see that. They're taking my crew down. I'm going to honor the chapter. I want to do more boarding. Boarding. Uh, honor the chapter. They're going to be going low on crew now. I will... I always target engines. Although, for space marines, it doesn't really matter. Perhaps... Perhaps it would be best if we... Uh, Instead, I'm just going to go all head full and damn it, whatever happens, it doesn't really matter. Oh, there's Drifting Hull. Um, yeah, for Space Marines, maybe targeting the... <laughs> That's a nice ram there, look at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe for Space Marines, targeting the targeting the bridge is probably better. I'm going to turn that pulse forward off. Um, you notice this one has not done it. That's because it's got damage there. So 25% on some uh, weapons and two turrets destroyed and the engines damaged. I do have an order there for emergency repairs but it is on a cooldown. So I'm guessing we're just going to wail into that. I'm going to fire the auger probe to there so we have a constant uh, mark on it. We will put another bomb there because we'll hopefully be able to clip them. I think we will. See how slow this thing is, and troops getting beamed across. Um, oh, we do have enough for some more more vessels, so we'll do just that. Now, obviously, different factions play very differently. Um, Space Marines tend to be very, very good at boarding, have really tough ships, not very fast, um, but, you know, pretty good all round, uh, but also extremely expensive. Um, orcs are really cheap and cheerful. They're, they're meat, they're sort of their, the meat of their fleet is normally um, around sort of cruiser and destroyer level or below. The big ships aren't terribly great. Um, the Imperials, uh, the Imperial Navy is more sort of is more sort of um, can I just lightning strike into that? I can, yeah. There we go. And um, I think that's going to be pretty much GG shortly. On to the chapter as well. There we go. Uh, yeah, the Imperial Navy tends to be more sort of uh, big ships are better type thing. <laughs> That's their deal. <laughs> That's generally what they go for. One of the chapter. They're not going to last much longer yet. Uh, Thunder Rock Squad can get some boarding in. And um, the Eldar, which I quite like, uh, they're very hit and run. They have. I've got Void Shields, so this bar up here, and it just basically absorbs that before it takes it off the hull. Whereas the Void Shields, uh, the faster you were going, there's a win, the faster you were going, the more damage reduction you have. The Dark Eldar have um, Shadow Fields, so if you're going really fast, you get Stealth. Um, and they all play differently. And the AI seems to work alright for the most part in my experience. It doesn't seem to work very well with the Eldar, although it's better than what it used to be in the original. Um... But yeah, there's a win. Uh, you can see 100 points. Um, I don't know how we've got 101 points, considering you only get 50 or 100. I have no idea. But there you go. That is the moment to moment. That is the fighting. Obviously, if we picked something like the Corsairs, uh, we could go with... Let me just show you... Uh, Space Elves can't do that. Uh, let's just go for Custom Fleet. Um, and I'll show you the big difference in them, for example. So uh, I'll just sit here while it sort of lags out for a while. I'm assuming that's going to be fixed very shortly, if not by the time you see the video. So we'll go for a Void Stalker. We'll ship viewer. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. That is a nice looking ship. So look at the lancers on the front there. Yep, that's going to hit quite hard. And I love the effects on the sails. They're really, really good. Um, what else have we got? Tyranids. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll finish what I was going to say. Uh, the Corsair stuff, a lot of their ships, it's like everything's forward. So what you tend to do is go forward. They don't have an all-ahead full. They have a, like a little boost, and they, their second ability is to like 
basically turn any direction they want. So that combined with things like the micro warp jumps, you jump them, you're jumping them around, you're capturing points quicker, you're going into nebula and stealthing up, and it's a lot less brutal than just Imperial Navy Chaos. Uh, very beamy, very like, they've got a lot of lances, so they just sort of sit in medium to long range and do that. Um, Mechanicus, solving between these starters and Navy, as far as I can tell, uh, although I haven't played much at all, um, they do have things like the Nova Cannon, as does the Imperial Navy, which is like a long range, your shields are now gone type thing, um, Orcs, Body, Necrons, they've just got a really big ship, no shields, but they've got living metal and lightning arcs, uh, lightning whips and such, uh, Tyranids, uh, oh, let's have a look at their ships, go on, go on, we'll have a look, we'll have a look, um, because we can. Uh, they are fairly interesting. They have a lot of ships. As you can see, you can't customize the ships, but you just get an option for loads of ships. So we can say, uh, bio asset hive ship, and we'll have a look at that ship. Um, and yeah, they do swim along. Okay. <laughs> and they get really close and sort of eat you. So uh, yeah, you don't want to get too close to those. Obviously, if you've got things like Tyranids versus uh, Dark Eldar or something, it's, it's, yeah, it's going to be a tough fight. Um, but, you know, in terms of balance, I can't speak much on that because I haven't played any of the multiplayer, and that's obviously where, where this stuff hits the fan. So, going on past experience, there probably will be some balance issues. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see how that one goes. Like I say, no first-hand experience in the multiplayer stuff. I have found the certain builds seem to be extremely powerful in Skirmish. Um, so there's, there's times when if I've got, well, for example, a full boarding build with the Starties, I've not yet had any great problem with it apart from when I came across Necrons. Um... And um, I think Tyranids as well. But other than that, I've never had any problem with anything else. Uh, but obviously, it's all about the... If you versus things like Corsairs, you'll never get in range because they'll just be long-ranging you and stuff. So, But the AI doesn't sort of go that way all the time. Either way, um, that's pretty much all I have much... I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Oh, um, one more thing as well. The look of the ships does change because it says section sub-faction. That's not just changing the paintwork. So, for example, if I go Chaos Thousand Suns, which is my preferred one, and we look at their big ship, we can see that... Really, I need to fix that delay. Um... There we go, we'll put the despoiler in there and we'll view the ship and it'll take a little while to load up, but it will eventually and it has not. Uh hang on. That's the radar. Go over to that one and you can see so Night Lords, bit of paintwork. No, Black Legion paintwork, but if we go for Thousand Suns, ooh. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Like spinny floaty tower stuff. Go for Nurgle. Uh, actually, I've never seen Iron Warriors. Is that just... Yep, it is just pretty much bulk on metal. Dry brushed over the entire thing. Uh, Empress Children. Yeah, well, that's got something going on on it. <laughs> um, World Eaters. Ooh, yeah. That's 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 blood for the blood god right there. <laughs> Do you it's got ramming bonuses? Uh, I don't think it has. Either way, there you go. You can see uh, the, the changes the look of the ship, so that's pretty cool as well. So yeah, that's been a bit of Balfi Gothic Armada 2. Uh, despite the issues when it comes to performance now and again and the random little bugs are at and, like I said, potentially some uh, issues with balance, I've enjoyed my time with it constantly. Uh, there's not really been any major frustration. I've been loving just playing me and a mate, just smashing through some skirmishes, trying the different fleets out. Um, would much prefer to not have to rank stuff up to get things, but I mean, that's a that's all personal preference, isn't it, I guess. Um, playing, playing the campaign, the Imperial one, uh, quite an enjoyment, so hopefully going to go through that and try the other ones out. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much like the first one, but with more stuff, and that's, I guess, <laughs> um, sort of what I think people expected and hopefully probably wanted. Hopefully, uh, will be expanded upon, especially when it comes to the uh, skirmish stuff and the comp stomp and corp stuff and just the like the multiplayer stuff in general. Because I would like to be able to pick points and maybe have some more options for the maps and such. But you know what? All these sort of minor stuff. It's functional. It works. It's fun. It's 40k. If you like the first one, you're gonna like this. If you didn't like the first one, or you don't like the moment to moment of what you've seen there, you're not gonna like it. So. There you go. There is some uh, micromanagement stuff in the campaign, so that may sway you, but um, 
it's probably not enough. It's not a 4x any, by any means. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Links in the description so you can check it out yourself if you do so desire. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.